somebody call a doctor. I want a bigger logo. You can't handle a bigger logo. G'day, this is the Dr. Branding Podcast. I am your branding Dr. Frank. The surgery is open and let's answer our next patient's question. But before we do, we are going to diagnose the brand problem and prescribe a solution to do better branding. Question today comes from Joe in Canada and Joe asks, Canva, should we be using it in our business? I hear the hype, but is it worth it? Canva, should we be using it in our business? Is it worth it? Joe, thank you for the question. All the way from Canada. Uh, again, diagnosing this problem and uh, prescribing a solution. Look, this is some Canva hype. Let's call it that as a diagnosis first and foremost. Um, Canva, very big uh, company based here in Australia. Uh, huge success story uh, from those three that started Canva. And uh, it, it is worth the hype. It is a fantastic online tool to create uh, graphic design uh, based uh, social media posts, presentations, uh, all kinds of invitations and graphics, things like that. Um, it's a great online tool, especially for beginners that want to do some design uh, things themselves. It's definitely not for the professional graphic designer, branding person, um, but it is a great tool, I think, for, for many different use cases. Um, and it's very accessible. They make it so, so, so easy to use. This is not a plug in any way for Canva. Um, I do use it every now and then for client uh, projects, especially when it's a client that will be the end user of, say, a template I might need to create. Uh, and it does get some use every now and then in my client process. So let's talk about Canva. The Canva hype is, is getting caught up in all the digital tools, especially Canva that are out there that are available for businesses and creators. Uh, and, and again, much like my last episode, it's, it's very much FOMO, fear of missing out. You see other people talking about Canva. Oh, I need to use Canva, 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 Canva. And you keep hearing the same word. There is a term for that hearing that or seeing the same thing over and over when you are, are researching something. It's like buying a new car and you see the same car everywhere. There's a term for it. I, I, I could Google it, but we're, we're not going to do that. I'm sure you know the, the thing I'm talking about. But it's an easy to use tool. It's very accessible. You can pick up and play without having to pay for it. Um, it does have a tremendous amount of templates that you can just plug in your information, drop in your photos, export it, job done. Didn't really need to do all that much. You could add your brand colors. You could add your logo to it. Uh, it it's, it's, it's a very easy learning curve straight out of the box. Um, at least I believe. I mean, I'm the graf uh, graphic designer originally, so it should be easy for me to pick up and use. Um, but it does come down to, in terms of the result, whatever the output is, it does come down to your skill set of graphic design skills and your design eye, if anything. Um, and it does have its drawbacks. Uh, a few of them in particular, the first is print colors. Uh, and I'm not really going to bore you with this detail, but just something to be aware of, I guess, with Canva, if you're jumping into this like Joe, uh, is if you're going to be using this for a print-based application, you're going to take this to a printer and need to print in color. Um, Canva works in a digital color space, which is called RGB, so red, green, and blue. Whereas the print colors are CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow, and K stands for black. Uh, and this is the color that print printers use. The printer you might have at home or the printer you go to a professional printer to print your invitations or a birthday card or whatever you're printing out. It might be a banner or something like that. Um, they're, they're not print colors that you are using um, in their online space. And Canva does have a workaround for this in a, in a bit of a roundabout way where you can, uh, if you know your print colors already, you need to find what is called a hex code, which is a six digit or number combination of letters and numbers um, that has a specific CMYK hex value. You put them into the chosen colors that you wanna put into your document, and then you can export as a CMYK print PDF, I believe. Uh, and that can 
theoretically give you a print ready file. If you're not doing that and you're just print, you're choosing whatever colors Canva kind of has, or you're not aware of what that hex color is that is based on a CMYK value. So you have a certain amount of cyan, so I don't know, 50% cyan and 5% magenta and 20% yellow and then 0% black. And then it will give you a hex code. Um, if that if if that was just too much, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is this is all very basic stuff for me, but I, I, I don't want to get lost in the weeds with this. You can do a Google search about what I'm talking about. So hex, CMYK, RGB, give it a quick search on YouTube, and I think you'll find someone that will give you a very quick tutorial on that kind of stuff. Um, but in essence, if you are using RGB colors, this is where I'm going with this. If you're using RGB colors, you're picking colors just from Canva and you go to print them, sometimes the print color uh, won't come out as vibrant and the same color necessarily. It'll still be a very similar color, but it might be very muted. So you might have a very vibrant purple that might even be nearly kind of fluoro, but when it prints out, it's gonna be very dull. And you might feel like, hey, what, what's going on? And you might accuse your printer of stuffing up the print and they're like, no, 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 no. What you've given us isn't the right kind of color space. And there's the conversion difference problem. Okay, so that's one limitation. Sorry for getting into the weeds about that one. Um, there are some formatting limitations. There's some things you can't really do in terms of spacing text and things like that or outlining text and potentially getting some of the things that you might want as a stylistic choice for text or image placement, things like that. And you kind of need to uh, uh, work around their platform limitations and design based on those limitations. And I kind of feel it's like going to Aldi, the, sh the supermarket, if you've ever been to Aldi, they don't have everything. And you might end up finding that you start creating your, your meals during the week based on the products that they have in store rather than creating a recipe or finding a recipe or creating your own recipe and then going there, not being able to find everything. Then you have to go to other supermarkets that have those things and you can't just go to one or like a one-stop shop, uh, especially when Aldi is much cheaper than most other supermarkets. You kind of shop based on what Aldi has um, and cook based on what Aldi has. Um, and it changes, yeah, your cooking behavior. Same thing with Canva. This is, where, <laughs> again, I'm, going to, I'm getting so in the weeds here. But there's a little bit of an analogy there to compare the two in terms of how you might use Canva. And then the last consideration here, still within this uh, diagnosis phase of the Canva hype, um, is a limitation of certain features being stuck behind a paywall. So Canva is free to use, but there are certain features on Canva um, even things like exporting your documents, I think might also be a limitation in certain types of exports where you need to pay for their premium membership uh, to access those features. I think some of them now are like removing the background of an image potentially. So you might have a headshot of yourself and you want to remove the background and put a color background to use as your profile image on your Facebook or Instagram page. Um, I think that background remover tool might be a paid uh, feature. I can't remember off the top of my head. Again, this is not a paid uh, an ad here for it because I don't know everything about everything about Canva. That's it's it's not my shtick. I use more professional design software to do this stuff, um, and that's not a knock on you if you do use this uh, this Canva platform or anything like it. So that is the diagnosis phase of of, of uh, Canva hype. Now, Joe, that might have hyped you up. That might have scared you off. I don't know. But what I will say for this prescription is that, yes, there's nothing wrong with using Canva. It is a great option to go with if you are not a designer, especially. It's very accessible to get you into design software. I'd rather someone try out design and see not how hard it is, but how it can be done and maybe appreciate the level of understanding you need to have of color and text and typography and how to lay out your type and, and integrate that with imagery and how all that looks where, you know, you need to have words be able to be read over an image and placement to make sure it's legible. All those things that graphic designers think about, we also take that for granted as graphic designers, but I think if you do see the value in design as a result of working on Canva, I'm all for it. Uh, and designers do poo-poo it because of its limitations in some respects. Something of those, uh, some of those points I brought up earlier are a bit of a limitation in terms of its accessibility to do certain things. 
but I'm sure over time, you know, Canva, every time I seem to open it, there's something new that you can do on there. Give it five years and it might really compete with Adobe, possibly. Who knows? Who knows? Um, but I think it all comes down to your use case. What are you using it for? I think if you're going to be using it for digital only use cases, if it's for your social media content, for your social media banners and headshots and things like that, for your profile image, um, uh, social media ads, uh, even ads for uh, Google ads, uh, YouTube thumbnails, other graphics for PowerPoint presentations, doing PowerPoint presentations in there you can do as well, um, like those slideshow kind of things is what I'm talking about. Um, you could type up a document, like a presentation document. You could do proposals, company proposals, uh, all these kinds of things you could do. Company reports in there. As long as it's staying digital, I think it's its best use case. Uh, and if, again, if it's ex accessible for you, fantastic. The good thing about using something like Canva over, say, potentially something like PowerPoint is it does look a little bit more designery. It does have a bit of more of a flair to it, whereas PowerPoint seems to be stuck in the early 2000s in terms of the things you can do designery to it. Um, and even more so than Word, you can lay out things where you want them to on an A4 page, whereas Word, it's very set, you know, every kind of line is a certain placement and it's a bit hard to break that mold, if you know what I mean. Um, but I think use, ultimately use the tools that are at your disposal. And with Canva, it's very accessible. As I said, you can open up the website and start creating immediately without even creating an account. I find that just next level for a, a service on demand uh, or software as a service online tool is what they're called. Um, but I think you don't need to be necessarily be loyal just to one program and only use Canva and Canva is only what I use. You can have that integration of Word and PowerPoint, Canva, Keynote or Pages if you use a Mac. Um, you don't need to be loyal to that one program. You might even use Adobe Acrobat for certain things as well. Um, but there are alternatives to Canva. You can use another tool called Adobe Express. It's Adobe's version of Canva effectively. It's a much newer version um, or new competitor, should I say, to Canva. And it does have very much uh, a lot of the same functionality. And if you do work with a designer that does have Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator, um, they can integrate their tools with Adobe Express and upload and edit things in their, the software that they like using and upload it for you in Adobe Express for you to manipulate and export or for them to make templates and then for you to put in your information, things like that. So those things can be done on something like Adobe Express. Then you've obviously got PowerPoint and Word or you might have Google Slides, Google Docs um, or other professional software that you might have out there to create these things that might be similar to Canva. There, there's many tools out there, obviously. I don't know all of them. I'm not going to name them all, but there's just some ideas of what you could do. But I think you got, like I'll come back to that same point I said before of, you know, use the tool, tools at your disposal. We've got to use what is best for getting your brand out there uh, because I'm not going to say pick this tool or pick that tool. It's what's going to be. Canva is a very easy tool. And if I was going to make some social media templates for you to work with, if that was the deliverable of a branding exercise, then I'd make you some Canva templates. You, I'd say create a, a paid account so you can use all their features. Here's some templates you can use for your social media posts. You can edit them to your heart's content um, or you can just drop in the bits of information you need to and uh, away you go. Uh, what we want to be doing is creating some content or some deliverables that can engage with your clients and your customers effectively. And if Canva helps you do that, if, it, if you use their templates and things like that, Joe, uh, especially... And it's easiest, it's the easiest tool you can use to get your message across in a way that is captivating. It can connect with them. It can stop their scroll or whatever it is and look professional as well. Then, then if Canva's the one for you, then please use it. 
uh, apply your branding. That's some other kind of prerogative here. Please apply your branding. You know, if you find a template that's not in the colors that you use normally in your day-to-day, -day, it's not your brand colors that you already know you have. You can put in your brand colors if you know those values. If you've worked with someone like me, or some other kind of designer that's done your color, your brand colors, you've got a document, you can find the hex code that I was talking about before. Put that into your brand color uh, scheme in your Canva account. There is like a a brand reference, I think, or something like that, where you can put in your logo files and you can put in your brand colors so that you can drag and drop those file, uh, those, those logos, or you could eyedrop a tool, the, the color and apply that to the template that you might be using. Um, plop your logos on, plop your images of your, the people in your team or whatever it is. And then you've got something that is on brand. That's, that's all I'm hoping for as a result of you creating some kind of designed output that it is on brand if you're going to use something like Canva for your business. Um, so yeah, tools like Canva can help you do that. You've got to try what works best for you. And look, if Canva lives up to the hype, that Canva hype is real, <laughs> then I hope that does help you help you there, Joe. And for those of you listening, I do hope that helps you as well. Try Canva out. Again, it's free. Um, no plugs there, but uh, having used it myself, it's good. Um, please take a piece of brand candy on my way out, on your way out. Uh, it's your free resource guide to get at g'dayfrank.com forward slash candy. You can also make an appointment via that link for a brand related ailment you might have. And I'll see you at the next appointment in my next episode. Bye, everyone. Thanks for listening. The surgery is now closed. The Dr. Branding Podcast is hosted by Reagan Frank McCrill, that's me, and for legal reasons I want to be clear that I am not a registered or qualified doctor. The premise for this podcast is that it is a satirical analogy for branding consultancy to help others with their brand success. This podcast is also sponsored by my branding business, G'day Frank. Say g'day today by booking a call with me at g'dayfrank.com.